everybody. Welcome to my kitchen today. We are here to make a quick little snack. Actually makes a great lunch. I'll tell you what it is. I actually made lunch today and this is what I made out of what I had and it was so good. I'm like, I gotta show you guys this. So one of the things um, that they do in Italy that most people don't realize is that they make a sandwich out of what we would call, because in America we have more Hispanic influence, we would call it a tortilla. But over there they call it a piadina. Now there's different kinds of piadina. They're really flat like a tortilla, or they can be a little thicker like a flatbread, like we're used to seeing at the store, might be a Middle Eastern or some other like the Indian naan or something like that, but it's basically a flatbread. Some are thinner, some are a little bit puffier. So I happen to have some nice organic tortillas and I was like, what can I make? I had some chicken. So I cooked up some chicken in the fry pan here. I just kind of quickly salt, pepper, a little olive oil, just a smidge so it wouldn't stick and just kind of more or less grilled it. Then I had some asparagus. And then I was like, okay, cheese. I've got some slices of mozzarella. Whoops, almost broke that. And I had some goat cheese. So I made this awesome, you know, I was joking around at lunch that I made an Italian, um, an Italian quesadilla, but in fact, it's a piadina. So you can do it one of two ways. The typical Italian way is you fill it up and you fold it over and you cook it, grill it. Um, today I did it more quesadilla style where I did a flat one with another flat one on top and I cut it into quarters because it was easier to eat like a quick little sandwich. It wasn't going to fall apart. So we're going to do it the way I did it today because I'm going to use this as a snack for me and Pasquale later. So I just found that these Mission, oops, it's upside down. <laughs> Mission Tortillas makes an organic tortilla. So that makes me happy because, you know, I don't like stuff that ain't organic. So now on another show one day, we will make these because they're very easy to make on the, on the griddle. Um, it's just a flatbread, it's flour, water, there's no yeast in it, so it's very, very simple. So we'll make them one of these days coming up because now that I kind of came up with this idea, because I make these all the time, but I never really thought about it. They're actually really popular. They were originated kind of more north than where I'm from in Emilia Romagna, more in the Romagna region. Um, they're very popular down the Adriatic coast as kind of like beach food. You'll see them at stands. They actually have kiosks for these things. You know, it's kind of like a, like a taco stand, but a piadina stand. So anyway, so really simple. All I do is throw my piadina on the, this pan is already hot. So I'm just going to let it warm. I just let it warm up a little. Ooh, that is warming up a little just because I like to put the cheese on something hot. I'm just gonna warm up both of them. So, like I said, normally the Italian style is you only fill half. No, let's, let's do it Italian style. Okay, so just warming this up. So, here's what I did. First things first, put that aside. So, I just cut up some chicken that I kind of, I like it with like a nice little caramelized, you know, grill marks on it and stuff. So, it's nice and flavorful and has um, you know, this is cold now because I already cooked it. Okay. So as much as you want, I'm going to put this whole piece in because you know, it's protein. It's good for you. Lean chicken. But again, it's nice and seasoned. And this little piece right here. Mm. <laughs> that looks like a little crispy edge. Mm, yum. Okay. No. Nope. There we go. So here's what I'm going to do as soon as I stop chewing. Cheese. Now what I usually do is I heat my pan up and then I um, turn it down to lower. But I put it on high for a couple of minutes at the very beginning. I put one layer of cheese. I'm going to throw some chicken on here. This pan's hot. Now, I'm going to take some of this goat cheese. I'm just going to put little chunks like I did on mine today. So good. Just as plain goat cheese. You can use an herbed one. You can use a, you know, I bet you it would be really good. Like those ones that have like their goat cheese with like fig or cranberry or blueberry or something around them. 
I bet you that sweet and savory would be really yummy. This gives such a nice um, added different texture in the middle here. Okay, so you can see that. Now, I'm gonna take some, so I cooked up some asparagus. So it's the only vegetable I had in the refrigerator, so I'm gonna put these in. Just some little pieces. This asparagus I got was organic, and it was really skinny. Reminded me of the, um, the um, wild asparagus that we, we pick in Italy up on the mountain. A little bit more here. All right. And now, I'm just gonna take one more slice of cheese, because something's gotta stick to the top half, you know? So, oh, you know, I said I was gonna do it the other way, now I'm not. Okay, because I filled it too much. <laughs> now, I'm just gonna do that, just let it sit for a couple of minutes. Turned it off because it was really hot. But now I'm gonna, now, the important thing, ta-da, big spatula. Because you want this to melt, then you gotta flip it over because then the top's not really melted. You don't want everything falling out. Now, you could use um, a press. So if you really wanted to make it, you get one of these babies, stick it on top. That way it melts nice and nice. And then we're gonna turn it over. Oh yeah. Okay, got a nice little char on the edge there. We'll put the lid on that too. Or the lid, the press on it too. Oh yeah, nice and melty. So you can put whichever side you like better on top, you know, the not too dark side or the more crunchy side. We're gonna turn it over. My pan was hot, so that's why it cooks so fast. As you can see from the uh, your little first char. Okay, so all you gotta do, take a knife or your pizza cutter and cut it in half. So if you leave it in half, whoop, what, what? leave it in half, it's like a piadino in Italian, except normally it's closed on that side. Or you can just, you know, do it this way. And then look how cute this is. Let's get a little. You just get a nice little dish. And look at that. You got a nice little treat. All these beautiful little piadini pieces, or you can call it an Italian quesadilla or a flatbread sandwich or whatever. But I'm telling you, the goat cheese in here was game changing. It was so good. So chicken, mozzarella, goat cheese, and asparagus. That's all I put in here. And the only seasoning on the chicken was salt and pepper. Cooked it in just a little teeny weeny bit of olive oil in my nonstick pan. And oh my goodness, buonissimo. Very, very good. So look at that. Look how pretty it is, see? Anyway. So I'm going to take a pretty picture of it. I'm going to post it and you guys can try it out. It'll be a great lunch for tomorrow. And now in the meantime, let's talk about options. It doesn't have to be flat mozzarella. It can be shredded mozzarella. Although I very seldom buy shredded mozzarella because it's got all kind of crap on it to keep it from sticking together. They have these little anti sticky, I forget what it's called. But anyway, they put all this, you know, powdery crap in it so it doesn't stick together. Yuck. We don't know what that is. Um, Buy a block of mozzarella and shred it yourself. It always comes out better and it melts so much better. Anyway, mozzarella in any way, shape, or form. Fresh mozzarella would be good in here too. Um, you could use um, asiago. You could do something a little sharper. Yum. You could use any kind of good melty cheese. You know, even if you don't have any Italian cheese, a Monterey Jack would be nice in here. The other thing, it would be really good if you're Italian, like some Italian provolone or like the hard kind, like the Cascio Cavallo. If you're from Southern Italy, you know what I'm talking about. Um, it's that cheese that comes in a big round ball with a knot on the top, hung with a rope, and then they sit and let it age. But when it's nice and fresh, it melts really good. Um, all different kinds. Or you can take a harder cheese and grate it like you would a mozzarella and put that in. Anyway, any kind of cheese. The goat cheese was a game changer. Really try to do that. Um, any vegetable in there, but try to add a vegetable. You can put in peppers and onions, whole different flavor profile. The asparagus was nice. It was kind of more elegant with the goat cheese. These you could make for a party and like everybody's like, oh wow, what's this? Pasquale today for lunch was like, oh wow, what's this? <laughs> it was so good. Anyway, this is a great recipe. You can use this for lunch. 
You can actually use this for breakfast. Why not? Throw an egg in it or not. Leave it like it is. Breakfast, lunch. It can be a light dinner. It can be a great afternoon snack when the kids get home from school. One piece is, let me tell you, these are, these are pretty weighty. You know, we got some good stuff in them. So there's a lot of good things you can do with something simple like this. We don't have to make things complicated. It's easy peasy. So, so simple, so good. So please say hello. Um, please share my videos and my page. I really appreciate it. That's about it. So I just wanted to come to you today and share with you what I made for us for lunch. It's really yummy. You know, I'm just going to do a little cheat because I really don't want to eat this right now because I already had my lunch, but gosh, just a little sliver. You know, do you ever notice that like you take a little piece and a little piece and a little piece, you feel like you're eating less, but you're really not? Mmm. So good and really simple, but you can taste each flavor. You know, the secret to a good Italian sandwich is not putting too much on it. When you go to Italy, you get one meat, one cheese, maybe some arugula, or one meat, one cheese, and some tomato. Like they don't put an Italian hoagie together with 27 different kinds of meat and cheese. You can't taste the prosciutto in there. They could be lying to you and there's no prosciutto. You don't taste it because it all mixed together. Just pick one thing and the second thing, different flavors, and then put them together, just a couple of things. And boy, they taste so much better. Mmm. Like I said, so simple, so good. You all have a great day, and I will see you next time, as soon as possible, I hope. Ciao. Mm.